So, hello everyone. I know it's been, I was going to say a hot minute, but no, it's been ages since my last video. But uh, with COVID and being a mother and all these different developments in my life, it's been a bit difficult to create content. Also because I have my music side where I've been working on my, my new album and also influencing side of things where I have to create content for Instagram. So kind of YouTube took a step back because it is harder to like record, edit, and to be honest, just having good ideas for YouTube because YouTube has become such an amazing space with such great content creators that I just sometimes I feel I feel the pressure is high but today I'm bringing you guys a very relaxed and groovy video where I have a very special guest someone I very much admire love to my core and um, it inspires me every day. Just remember I have my braces on, so I'm just gonna take them off for me one second. Right, okay, so now I can speak like a normal human being. I'm using the Invisalign and sometimes I just feel like I can't speak very normally. Can't speak normally. Anyway, so yes, we have a special um, guest for the video today. And the reason why I'm going to invite this, this, this human <laughs> is because during um, COVID, I think I took a very, very keen interest in the political sphere of things, but also a little interest in financial. I say a little because my father, who is the guest today, he is an international financial advisor or wealth manager, if you will. If I do say the letters IFA in this video, that is just a short way of saying international financial advisor. And I say I took a small interest in the financial um, sphere, market, what have you, because he understands much more than I do. And because now I am 33, I feel like I should know a little bit more about um, the financial sphere of things. I just have a couple of questions that I've written down, very impromptu, but certain things that I think might be interesting for you guys to also know about and investigate. For example, at 33, I want to know more about pension planning. I want to know if I should be investing my money in certain different areas. So I think the best person to ask is my father. And so as this introduction is absolutely enormous, I'm gonna cut it short and let's just get into it. So, Daddy, will you come and join me on this very, very, very comfortable sofa? <laughs> I'm gonna move over here. So, everybody, this is my father. Hello. My father's name is Antonio Rosa and he lives in Portugal with me. We live here in Estoril, uh, near Cascais, and he has been a wealth manager for how many years now? A million. A century. No. Uh, <laughs> quite, quite a long time now. I thought, why not just invite him to the sofa, have a very, very chill, relaxed, groovy conversation. I have no study. Unscripted. Unscripted. I just... No idea what this is all no. about. No. <laughs> so I did this, I, I kind of thought of a, a way to go through, navigate the, the curiosities I have. Trying to understand in a very mellow way the intricacies of the financial market for someone that doesn't understand anything because I have no background in business. Um, I'm the arts, I'm part of the art world. And so... Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? No. Okay. So in the end of the video, I will be leaving my father's contact details if you if you took an interest in what my father does and if you want to, in essence, invest or anything, I don't know. Is that tea? <laughs> that is tea. I was going to get to that. So as we are English, I made my father a nice cuppa. So here you go. Nice cup of tea. Try not to spill it then. Yeah. It is your sofa. You might not want to do that. Let's get into it. I guess the first question <clears throat> that I wanted to ask you, Daddy, is... I'm now 33, I'm a mother, 33 is so old, but I wanted to know if you think at 33 I should be thinking in investing in either a private pension or I should be putting money aside, <laughs> is the stock market a good option? Okay, lots of questions, but in essence, at 33, what should I be thinking about when it, in terms of my capital? Well, actually, um, I've been saying this for the last 10 years to you, um, it's um, time that you should really start planning the long-term um, future, financial future that is, because my, my fear is, uh, and most people's fear is, um, that the, the governments won't have sufficient money uh, to maintain their um, pensions payments. Right. And as we all know, with COVID and everything else, there'll be a few others coming along the line. It will take, it will take an effect on the finances of the government and therefore people should not be expecting to Get live, much, off, live yeah. off of the government pension exactly and should always have uh, running parallel with that a private pension right. you, your generation don't like the term pensions well, let's just call it long-term saving plans yeah because I think like my generation or any generation that's just younger I guess in a sense 
wouldn't look at the uh, pensions. I've got long time to start exactly. thinking about a pension. Um, and talking about lo- long time, the actual retirement age um, mm. from, for women was at one time 60, it went to 65, and now it is um, currently 66 um, and a half years. 66. And, and by 2028, I believe, it should be um, pushing 68. Their aims is to go to 70. So can you imagine? It's just, it feels so unfair to be, you want to work a certain amount of time of your life, but you want to know that, like, I would say in the last quarter, or even the last third of your life, but you want to have some money aside so that you can actually live. Well, with... the, only, the only reasons why they've extended the actual retirement age is simply because the average Science age... Science has evolved. Well, no, it's, the, it's, it's the average age now, uh, longevity. Right. People live much longer. Uh, in, in Europe, we look, we're talking about um, 79, 80 being the average. But even if it is 79, 80, if we're talking about a pension that only kicks in at 70, that's nine years. Yeah, but the average. So people do live 100 and whatever. But not really. No, no, but, I mean, but come true. on. But, but no, it's true. And uh, yes, you're, you're, quite, you're, you're quite right. Um, so so the governments have to be very careful uh, and, and insist on people mm. having their own um, private saving plans right. to supplement it should be to supplement the pension plan from the government supplement not be the main source of income but is there any benefits retire. but is there any benefits that the government will in fact have for private pensions well there, there always is depends what country you live in Portugal not a great deal but certainly in the UK right. in England they do offer very attractive incentives the private schemes uh, there's also incentives there and the sooner you start investing um, the better it is for you because then you'll be earning interest on capital and interest, right. compound, blah, 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 blah. What is the interest rate at this point? It's, well, it, no, it, I'm no, sure it's like no, 0. I, 0. No, 0. no, no, no. <laughs> when I refer to interest, I refer to the actual um, the growth of the investments. Um, okay. Your generation, you, know, you call it interest. There is no interest at the moment on yeah. positive cash flow, as you know. But for a long time, it hasn't. No, um, the been... last two or three years... The interest has been going down drastically, right. and the more often than not, you are you'll be receiving negative interest in banks. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm not saying put your money in the bank. I'm saying that invest it um, in the uh, long-term saving plans. Well, that's what we all want. Invest it properly. Sorry, I don't know. My computer, my my camera stopped by itself, but we're back on. But you, was, it's so it's like in this sense, you have a, a brochure of different. <laughs> different places where you could would invest this money, hedge funds, bonds, um, stocks, if you will. Well, you're, you're, you're delving into technicalities. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend hedge funds for your generation unless you've got millions to invest right. and able to actually take the risks. No, no, we, we try to uh, steer away from that, uh, from those highly risk investments. Uh, Bitcoins, no. Uh, for time being, right? Uh, no, but you we, could, in fact, have high risk investments if a client would, in fact, want that. Well, of course, I mean, the the end of, is no, at the end of the day, um, we, we have a, a non discretionary, in other words, we can only advise you, okay? It, at the end of the day, it, it is up to you where to, whether to take that advice right. or not. For your because I know that you work with a lot of international um, clients, um, namely from the UK, mm-hmm. and I, I think my question is, what does Portugal, because I know what Portugal has to offer, but could you explain why we are seeing such an influx of expats or people from around, like Finland, you have clients from Sweden. What's so attractive about Portugal, its government, the taxation? What's so interesting about Portugal? Let's look at um, many things. Portugal, um, the Nordic countries, of course, love the idea of coming to Spain, best part of their uh, yeah, last further of their lives right. in a sunny climate. Sunny environment, well, good food. That, we have 1,700 kilometres of shoreline, of which... The coast. Yeah, the coastline, of which a lot of it is actually beautiful sandy beaches. With great so, fish. That's true. Um, and the southern part of Portugal uh, experiences 300 days a year of sun. And not wow. just sun, but beautiful, clear, blue sky. Um, and I always mention this for my, predominantly my UK clients, that um, eating in Portugal is amazing. Yeah. It really is. is a, and a drinking. Wine, Cheers. Particularly wine. It's a variety really of good. beautiful restaurants. Um, beautiful restaurants along the coast, looking yeah. over the seas. Wonderful. However, the, 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 the key thing is 
that it is 80% cheaper than in UK. So um, that in itself is an amazing attraction. But obviously that alone doesn't entice people to move over. Um, what the government did a number of years ago, um, introduced um, a, a tax incentive for people to come over here, predominantly people that are, are close approaching their pension age. Right. Um, and they offer a tax. It's called the non-habitual residence tax. But basically it, it's come over here, be a tax resident, and up until recently, those people that are um, successful coming over here on this particular um, status, they experience 10 years tax at zero on their private pension. Now things have oh, changed. Their private pension. Private pension. Things have changed uh, now uh, due to a lot of pressure from the European Union. Now we are uh, having to uh, introduce a 10% flat charge, flat, flat rate. Okay. So in other words, those people from Northern um, Europe that have a very, very um, high pension, yeah, but tax very, very highly at 50 or 80 percent, yeah, okay, it's crazy. Uh, can come over here and for, for 10 years pay zero tax. Sorry, 10, now it's 10 percent, now it's 10 percent, but still, it's but, much better than 50. Well, exactly. Uh, I think in UK, the average is about 35 percent. Um, so yeah, it, it's um, there are different, um, different rules for each country, right. but that's on average. So if you can come over here. Experience the wonderful um, uh, sunshine, uh, beautiful restaurants, and play play golf. We have um, more golf courses per square kilometre um, than the other uh, countries in Europe. But what about if you if you came from England and you're pu you're paying your pension, your public pension, and then your private pension? Can you transition? Can you bring that to Portugal? Yeah, I mean, um, generally speaking, the state pensions will be uh, taxed that source. In other words, they, re they you pay, um, uh, they are retained at those countries. Right. Okay. But of course, yeah. the private pensions, if you are successful in that uh, non habitual residence um, status, you will experience 10% flat rate for 10 years. So, and not only that, um, there are a lot of people that have actually invested money in the stock markets um, f um, along their lives and they have accumulated um, certain amounts of monies and they're invested. Those investments, if they uh, pay dividends, those dividends are also uh, tax-free as well. So dividends, private pensions, dividends zero, private pensions uh, 10%. But could you come to Portugal with a private pension from the UK and then open up another private pension in Portugal? There's, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do that. Would often, it, you probably often, wouldn't even want to do that. Well, no, more often not people that are on have private pensions. Uh, private pensions click in at 55. So, yes, I have some clients that come over here at the age of 55, um, uh, enjoying their private pensions, and also then um, want to work as well. And in that regime, um, you're able to actually uh, effectively work and experience a flat rate 20% as well. Tax. That's not bad. No, no, it's fantastic. Right. And you think Portugal now is at 48%. Uh, I'm not going to state all other countries around Europe, but um, Portugal, the top end tax rate is 48%. It's 48%, it's so 48%. high. And uh, in this regime, um, it's 20%. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. So, yeah, the answer is yes, you can come over here, um, 55, re retire with your private pension, but not your state pension. That kicks in at uh, whatever, 66. But if they've got a very decent private pension, at 55 you can, you can start taking pension income, tax that 10%, 10 and then re, re, um, initiate another, another right. private pension That's good. with us. Yeah, now that you bring up us, my father works for a company called Black Tower, and as an international financial advisor, again, a wealth manager, what, what services do you provide with Black Tower? For example, if I had a lot of money, um, and I came to you and I said, okay, I want to put about, I want to put this aside. What, what service exactly do you provide? Would you provide for me? Well, um, I, I'm, our main business is uh, looking after the private individual. Uh, since the inception in 86, we've been doing exactly that. That's still our, our core business, looking after private individuals who wish to invest in the stock markets. Uh, we also do um, uh, pension transfers. Uh, Which is what we were talking about. Exactly. Um, so yeah, pension transfers, that's a, that's a very key business for us as well. Um, long-term investments, I guess. Long-term investments. 
um, people that, that uh, wish to be um, looked after um, and not wish to actually carry on looking after their own funds, okay? All right. Pass it over just to the responsibility. Just delegate the responsibility. Yeah, and and really outsource easy. that to ourselves, right. and we will actually uh, look after those investments um, on behalf of our clients, correct? So they're looking for more of a private, long-term, more personalised relationship when it comes to where the money goes, and they, they, you probably get a report every Well, term. it depends on the, on the client. Daily, weekly, monthly. Christ, daily. Can you imagine? How's my money today? No, we That's don't. really annoying. Well, <laughs> we don't... We don't um, Catered for the retail market. Right. Um, our offices are well located um, for um, predominantly individuals that have um, a high level of, of wealth, wealth to, yeah. to actually invest. Um, so, and, and not only that, but it's you're a, in charge of the Lisbon office. The Lisbon office. We cover Portugal, north and south. That's good. And do you do offshores? As like, no. okay, it's obvious that it's all legal, but do you delve into the offshore market? No. Just like, he's legal, I swear, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so on the books, right? I've got my ironing board out there for <laughs> Do you launder also? Yeah, we do lots of money laundering all the time. He's joking, he's joking. <laughs> no, um, but you do, obviously, you delve into the offshore markets. No, um, we're clear for I know, because I feel like when I say offshore, no, I'm really no, afraid no. of the connotation that it has. No, it, it, offshore... It, if you're not laundering uh, money <laughs> or drugs or whatever. You no, know, people do want to uh, have setups predominantly uh, offshore for um, intergeneration succession planning. In other words, pass their wealth on to, to, the, to their children. Right. It's not, it's, it's not a prerequisite. Um, most of our business these days is done onshore. A lot of our clients wish to actually uh, come onshore, so we offer solutions for... So it's just funny to think about it. They want to come on onshore. They're tired of being in their boats. <laughs> no, um, th there are there are things these days um, that we provide for clients that um, are very sensitive of paying tax. Um, I think we all are, Daddy. We're all t sensitive about paying tax. And for those reasons, we advise our clients to invest in uh, what we call insurance policies. Right. Um, that have a lot of tax incentives for people. That's the thing, and it should have more tax incentives. Well, that's been introduced across across Europe right. for to, from the governments to entice people to start saving for the long term or investing and, or or invest and use, utilizing these we call them vehicles to um, uh, monies that are sort of invested and grow. Right. Uh, you're not taxed on them yeah, exactly. if you don't take them out. So I guess it would be interesting for me if I if I was a very, very, very wealthy person. I would, the reason probably why I would go and have a meeting with Black Tower is just because in my head, it feels as though my father has like this brochure. Like if you wanted to, imagine if you wanted to take a cruise, right? I've always wanted to take a cruise, but I want to take the best cruise that there is. I want to have as much fun as I can. And I want this cruise to last as long as it, it can. I'd probably go to Black Tower and say, okay, what cruises do you have? What's the risk of going in this cruise and it just being a horrible time? What's the what what's the risk value of this cruise being amazing? And then you show me all these different brochures of all these different cruises, and in essence, that would be what you would do with the money. Yeah, well, well um, in layman terms. No, no, a a absolutely. One thing that um, we do in our industry, what we we certainly do in Black Tower, is before we take anybody on, we do have to undertake a lot of um, a lot of bureaucracy. And that takes the form of a completing a number of documents. But the main one is... I've seen them, you've shown me one. Yeah, the main one is a fact find. Basically, it's an x-ray of the individual, the financial <laughs> aspect of the individual. Right. Uh, we, we, we must understand um, his overall um, wealth. Right. Because um, he's got, let's say, a, a million, okay? Uh, we're not going to say, okay, well, give us all that, we'll invest that. Right, you need to. We, we can't do that. So we, all, all those... All those um, Questions and answers done right at the the uh, initial stages. Um, but once we have that, um, we have a good idea about the individual and also uh, the risk analysis. Right. Um, some people are very happy to invest, as you said earlier on, hedge funds. Okay. Uh, more of, are you sure? <laughs> more of, yeah. More often than not, most of our clients want to invest for the long term. Right. Okay. They also have accumulated their wealth over their lifetime. In business right. working so they're very cautious they want to maintain their accumulated wealth uh, and accumulate more no they, they well we, we say uh, um, capital growth over the medium to long term 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, that. So in essence, don't go to the casino and play fifty fifty. No. So so we do we do um, advise our clients to look at the long term investments, and we have an, an an array of options for our clients. Brochures. Bro- well, no, true. Bro- for me, bro- if you will, it just makes it easier. But it's based upon their risk uh, appetite, um, and um, that that takes a good couple of hours, really. It kind of reminds me of, of shorting. No, right? no. Yeah. But it reminds me because if no, I know it's completely different, but it does remind me uh, that if if you want to short a company, that that the risk is very very high. Oh, I better go now. <laughs> no, 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 the risk is really high, but the return is amazing. It is. If it is. if yeah. if it works. <laughs> there are pe- there are no there are people that um, are very good at shorting, uh, but that's not our our business. I, I, I wouldn't. And those that come to us and say, to Tony, let's do some hedge funds and shorting, and I say bye bye. No, yeah. that's not our business. And, and you can't. I can't even imagine like going to bed at night time and just not knowing if it's going to go well. And it's not your it's not your money that you're playing with. In essence, yeah. I, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Our, our main our main concern is to protect the actual accumulated wealth. Protect the capital, grow the actual capital over the medium to long term. You know, at the end of the day, you, you get nothing. You get uh, zero interest. In fact, most most um, economies now in Europe are often negative rates on interest. Right, just keeping it stag- stagnant money doesn't make money anymore. And of course, inflation, it used to, but well, doesn't anymore. And not only that, inflation will eat away at that really. So let's say if you invest a, a thousand pounds or euros. You know, in ten years, uh, you probably get about seven hundred pounds back. That's awful. So exactly. Yeah. So just don't just keep it in the in the bank growing moss. What was it? Gonna, what's the word? <laughs> moth. Moth. Yeah. Is there a word? Yeah. But that, it is a word. Yeah. Moth. Growing what? <laughs> Moths. Moths. Right. Okay then. So I guess um, my last question would be: At the age of thirty-three, would it be uh, prudent to think about investing? Well, it would be awfully silly if you didn't start investing now, and I do mean now, um, for the long term. Um, These saving programmes are designed for the person to want to set aside religiously an amount every month or every quarter over the next 15, 20 years. So those that want to actually invest in private uh, savings schemes have to be very clear how much they can afford. It should should be surplus amounts of money, okay? Rather than spending what have you, save it. Okay, right. you can uh, um, you can increase the values. Okay, and there are certain times you can actually stop paying f- for it for certain reasons. If you lose a job, right? Okay. If you need to be able to. No, exactly. Pause. If you lose a job, you can say right, but well, pause on that. Yeah. So we pause that for a period of time and re uh, rekindle it. Yeah, I think I think I've answered all the questions that I had. Okay, well, I guess the last question is: Will you do this pro bono for me? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to pay commission. <laughs> Just because you're being nice to me and offer a cup of tea. Yeah, know? because the cup of tea, do you do pro bono? No, there's, there's no pro, no. No p- pro bono. No, there's no pro, no. What? <laughs> pro bono. All right, Danny. Well, um, I'm very, very thankful that you were here to talk to me a little bit more and, and um, clarify many of the... Well, I saw if it's off the cuff and I, I wasn't no, even prepared fine. for this. I didn't prepare you. That's the thing. I wanted no. it to be as natural as possible. I wanted to ask the questions that Fra- I had. Frame in a deep end. I, no, this is a shallow end for you. Like, if you went, if we went into the deep end, it wouldn't be me on the sofa. It would be someone that actually understands the financial market. But um, if you th- took an interest in this topic and if you want to have further conversations with my father about investment plans or... Moving to Portugal. or move, Especially moving to Portugal. Um, I'm going to leave my father's details down here in the description box. So feel free to, to shoot him an email and uh, he'll um, reply if it's a positive one. But yeah, thank you so much for, the, for, for being here, for watching this video. And thanks, Daddy, again for being here with me. And uh, until the next video, hopefully... Do come soon. into my house next time. <laughs> next time, another... Because my father's a... a um, a, an avid, I would say historian, but not what, not an accredited historian, but in my eyes, a historian. So we might have other conversations about different topics. Well, that's, that's you know, you never know. Just like sit down and talk be about. Far more interesting to talk about. Finance. How about you leave us some requests about other topics? Uh, like I said, a, a, a true historian, religion, anthropology. There's so many different things that we can discuss. So just uh, leave us a, a comment below, and we'll think about it for the next video. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you for the invite.